Hi there, I'm Denise Wakeman from The Future of Inc. And today I am here with my partner, Dr. Ellen Britt, and one of the featured expert writers that we feature, feature, I'm going <laughs> much with features, uh, that we feature on The Future of Inc., uh, Nina Amir. So I am going to be turning this broadcast over to my partner, Ellen, and she is going to be going to, she's going to introduce you to Nina, and then we'll get underway. So welcome, and we're super glad that you're here. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody, to our Future of Inc. Hangout. How to Write and Publish Books That Sell. Now, I'm co-hosting today with T4 co-founder, Denise Wakeman, and our special guest, Nina Amir, as Denise has told you. Now, on today's Hangout, you're going to learn how to craft marketable book ideas, how to evaluate your book to determine its potential to sell, sell, y'all, <laughs> create a business plan for any book that you have, determine if you have what it takes to become a successful author or indie publisher or both, and plan for a successful career as an author and a publisher. Now, Nina is a sought-after author, book, blog-to-book, -book, and results coach who transforms writers into inspired, successful authors, authorpreneurs, and blogpreneurs. And that's a mouthful. She <laughs> moves her clients from ideas to finished books by helping them combine their passion and purpose so they create products that positively and meaningfully impact the world. Now, Nina speaks at top writers' conferences all over the country, and she's a regular writer for The Future of Inc., plus Joel Friedlander's TheBookDesigner.com, which was named one of the top self-publishing blogs by Digital Book World. Now, under her guidance, some of Nina's clients have sold 300,000-plus copies of their books, landed deals with major publishing houses, and have created thriving businesses centered around their books. Nina writes four blogs. I can hardly keep up with two, but she writes four. She has self-published 12 books, and she founded the National Nonfiction Writing Month. Denise and I are happy to have you with us today, Nina, and on behalf of the Future of Ink Nation, welcome. Thank you so much, Ellen and Denise, for hosting me today. It's just a pleasure to be here, and I'm excited to talk about this topic with you guys and with all the people who are listening. Fantastic. Well, we've got a lot of ground to cover around this topic today, Nina, so I want to just jump right in. Is that okay? That is perfectly fine. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure we have uh, a good many authors and aspiring authors listening to this or who are going to be listening to this. And they, they really want to become ebook authors or even print book authors. Now, I know you're an advocate of careful planning, Nina. And you want them to stop and do some of this major planning or preparation before they publish their books. So what type of planning exactly do you recommend and why should they do this? I recommend that they actually produce a business plan for their book. And by business plan, I'm actually talking about uh, what might be called a book proposal. But I don't want anyone to misunderstand uh, if they're thinking about self-publishing or they're thinking about doing an ebook. A book proposal is a business plan for a book. That's what a publisher is asking for because they want to determine the marketability of a book. They need to determine whether it's going to sell. If you're not planning to propose that book to a publisher or an agent, it you don't need a proposal per se, you still need a business plan. That business plan determines for you, the indie, the indie author, the indie publisher, whether your book is viable, whether it will sell. So I want them to produce a business plan for the book for, the re for that reason, that they need to know, they need to determine for themselves first if their book is a viable product to bring to market, if it will sell. So this is not just a, an academic exercise you're talking about here. This is, this is a tool then, Nina, is what, what you're saying, so that we can determine in advance, before we put in all those long hours of working, whether our book is going to sell or not. Is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing? That is exactly right. And it's two, there's two parts to it. One is the tool. The tool is the business plan. Mm -hmm. The other part of it is the training, the training of yourself to actually use this tool. 
And the using of the tool is not just accumulating the information to put into the business plan, it's it's also learning what to do with that information. It's the evaluation of the information and not just from your own perspective because your own perspective wants to say it's a great idea. It's a great idea. I'm sure. going to write the book and I'm going to publish it because I think it's a good idea. It's the evaluation from somebody else's perspective and that perspective is the perspective of an acquisitions editor, the person who would actually acquire a manuscript manuscript from a publishing house not because you necessarily want to traditionally publish but because that's the person who has the objectivity to determine if a book will sell so if you want to self publish you still want to begin to see through that lens to have the objectivity to see through that kind of lens of a publishing professional who's concerned with is this a viable product to bring to the market can my company make money with this will they earn back what they invest and that's what you want to do no matter how you publish your book so it's it's the tool and it's the knowing how to use the tool well you know that makes perfect sense and I can just hear our audience saying well you know, what goes into a business plan like that? Can you tell us um, how should we put one of these together? Yeah, so if you were to go out and buy a book on how to how to write a book proposal or if you were to get a template or um, I have a new book out on the topic but anything that tells you what goes into a book proposal is going to give you the foundation. I suggest that you use as the as the template a nonfiction book proposal because a nonfiction book proposal has uh, more more sections to it. It requires more. So what you start with is an overview. The overview uh, asks you to actually uh, produce something that's very similar to the back cover copy that you're going to put on your book. Hmm. Uh, or produce for your book. So you have to write a summary for your, of your book. Um, and, and it's marketing text, really. So you, you summarize your book in a way that uh, talks about uh, not only what it's about, but the what's in it for me factor. Why would somebody, you know, what's the value in this book? And how is it unique and different? Uh, and you, I, I tell people to write a summary and then to write a list of benefits. What, how is the book going to add that value? To readers and then you go on and you produce a section um, that's called markets the markets section is actually uh, begins with the ideal reader knowing actually who you're writing for and then from there you are going to uh, to determine how many of those ideal readers exist in the world or in the United States or whatever country you're in and you uh, determine if your markets large enough so you know you have to have enough readers to make your product viable, right? To, to make sure there are enough people to buy it. So you're going to study the market, and you're going to also determine where these people exist. It's a real market analysis, so that you know how to market to these people later on. Then you do a competitive analysis. So this means looking at uh, um, looking at where uh, at what other books have been published, and so you're you're going to actually study the competition and you're going to produce a section uh, where you talk about the pros and cons of the top let's say five books that have been produced in your category so that you can determine uh, how your book is better different whatever uh, then uh, you would do a um, uh, section called spin-offs this is where you're going to start to think about what other books are you going to write hmm. What book, you know, what other ones are you going to write so that you can uh, maybe think about your branding and because the more books you write, the more money you make. And maybe you want to think about how you're going to build a business around your book. So this is a way for you to consider whether you're more than a one book author. So this is very important. Um, then you're going to have a section that's, you know, your bio. And with that bio comes a section on um, possibly your, your mission statement. You know, why do you want to write books? Why, why is this book important? Why do you feel compelled to write it? And beyond that, your author platform. Very, very important. How are you doing the pre-promotion that will help you sell this book? Because a book that sells doesn't necessarily sell itself. Of course, we're trying to produce books that are marketable. That's the whole point of a business plan is to produce a marketable book. But it's not going to necessarily sell itself. So you have to have this author platform, which is all the work you do to create uh, visibility for yourself and influence. And so you know, you, you'll have there a listing of everything you've done to date of you know to build author platform 
and then comes your promotion plan there's a section in the business plan for your promotion plan how you will actually market your book and then also with all of this you've you've you you look at all of it and uh, you will have retooled and reworked your idea till you also come up with a table of contents that's in there in the business plan and a uh, a summary of every chapter in your book so it's a chapter by chapter synopsis so that you know exactly what's going all the content going in the book and you can line all of this up and sync it all up so that all of it makes sense and is producing a marketable book and if you self publish there's more if you self publish there would there would be more more information well, well before we get in before we get into the self publishing thing wow that's a mouthful you know <laughs> I know I might have given you more than I than, no, than I intended. No, there. I'm just I'm just I'm impressed. I mean, I'm just I took I just took a few notes, but just to recap for our audience, I had to, I got like nine sections: an overview summary, uh, markets, competitive analysis, spinoffs, your your bio, your platform, your promotional plan, plan table of contents, and then chapter summaries. Um, that's a lot. Now I I. And a lot of folks are saying, "Well, how do I know, <laughs> you know, how to do all, how to do all this?" And I know you have some uh, some courses and stuff like that, and and we'll talk about one of those courses that you've got coming up a little later on. But right now, I want to ask you if one of the things that struck me as really important is um, knowing how your market is large enough. And I know we can't get into it in, just in terms of time constraints. We cannot get into nine sections here. <laughs> but can you give us a hint as to how we might know specifically that our market is large enough? So I sent people to Google you know, to do research. You, you really need to go look at the research and you need to see, you have to find some numbers. And then, and it's not about saying, um, I was just talking to a literary agent about this uh, the other day, it's not about saying, you know, my market is women. Because mm -hmm. that's a huge market. And, and that's great that it's huge. But you have to be able to say my market is women business owners. And maybe it's Christian women business owners. Now you have a narrowly focused market that's actually very large. But now you can also target it because where do women Christian business owners hang out? There are probably organizations and you can look at those organizations and you can find out how many members they have. And you can go to those organizations and probably market your books to them, right? But so this is how you begin to see how large is my market and is there a way for me to access it and and uh, well, that, that's the short answer wow, <laughs> without wow. getting into it. <laughs> very, very interesting. We well, you know you alluded, Nina, a, a few seconds ago that the plan for a self-published book is going to differ from a book of, for those who want to traditionally publish with a traditional publishing house. Can you go into how a self-published book business plan would differ from someone who's going with a traditional house? Yeah, so for, the first thing is that a, a plan for a... Um, uh, for a self-published book would not be necessarily as polished. You know, if you're, if you're going to approach an agent and then an acquisitions editor right. at a publishing house, you're going to have a a plan that it, you know really looks like a book proposal and it's going to be formatted and we're going to make sure everything, you know, every T is crossed and every, you know, you know what I mean, it's going to be yeah. edited and polished up and everything is going to be perfect. If for your own sake, you don't need that. We're talking about just accumulating the information, putting it in there so that it makes sense to you. And um, beyond that, you need some extra sections because you are actually creating a business plan for a business. Because yeah. it, when you self-publish, you are a startup publishing company and you are, a, uh, you are now the publisher. You are an entrepreneur. You're starting a company. So you're the investor in your own business and you need to be able to, you need to know uh, where your break even point is. So you're going to need a break even analysis in your business plan. You're going to need a, um, uh, you're going to need a uh, profit and loss statement. You might want to have a list of um, all the different uh, subcontractors you need, like editors and designers and um uh, proofreaders or indexers or you know any of those things and you're gonna probably want to have some very clear goals in there and timelines and things like that so so it becomes a real business plan beyond just is my book a viable product um, you know it's 
it gets down to the, the dollars and cents. Can I afford to do this? How much money do I need? Do I need to crowdfund? Then, you know, what's my crowdfunding plan? Right. It's, it's all of that. And if you were going to crowdfund, I mean, this gives you a really great idea of how much money you would need. Because I think, right. you know, a lot of folks just say, well, well, you know, I have a business and I can, I should write a book. But they just kind of go into it. This really, I think, this really hammers home the point that there's a lot of careful planning that if you put it put into it, I think you're going to be much more successful. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably because the Future of Ink, we cater to um, those authors who are probably online entrepreneurs already, but there's there's probably people on here or that will listen to this who are interested in writing fiction. Um, just quickly, do you do both fiction and nonfiction books need uh, a business plan like this? Yeah, they do. Um, if you want to traditionally publish, more and more often traditional publishers are asking for, you know, a book proposal for mm -hmm. fiction mm -hmm. um, that looks more and more like non a nonfiction book proposal, and for indie authors who want to produce a novel that has a higher likelihood of selling well, mm -hmm. the more focus they put on producing a marketable book the higher their likelihood of selling more copies right so right. if they go through the same process and they look at the market and they look at the competition and then they hone their story to, to better meet the needs of the market and their ideal readers they're going to increase their chances of selling books now they see that as not very creative but it's not true it's a very creative process you're just asking yourself to to not just say I have a story idea and I'm just going to write it. You're saying I have a story idea now. How can I make it better? And, mm, and that is mm -hmm. a creative process. And so the the actual book proposal and business plan can help you make your work better. I mean, yes. I can already see how that can happen just by the laying out of the structure. Yeah, oh yeah, because what you're doing as you evaluate. So as I said, it's it's a tool. You you have the tool of the proposal, and you put the information in there, or the business plan. You put the information in there, and then the evaluation is, you know, okay, does my idea act, uh, adequately target my market's needs and wants and desires? You know, is it solving their problems, answering their questions? I mean, for fiction, you know, it's is it a different story? Is it you know where they the places they like to go? Is it the kind of characters they like or whatever um, you know and then in terms of the category the, the the competition you're looking at the category what's already been written mm -hmm. how well mm -hmm. has it been done um, uh, what's the one book everybody's looking for that hasn't yet been written and you know how can I cater to that hole in on the shelf and so then you go back to your idea and say okay I got all this information how can I retool re uh, re-angle, um, what, what information could I include, what information should I take out, you know, hmm. how can I creatively take my idea and just make it better, make it so it's the best book that I could possibly bring to market. And, and that's very creative and, and, and really uh, pushes you as an author to produce the best book possible. Wow. So nobody gets off the hook then, Nina, uh, fiction or nonfiction, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but, they don't. <laughs> but it, it looks like to really sit down and methodically go through this and really do it right, you are really going to have a tool that's not only going to help you in crafting the fiction or nonfiction book that you really want to write, but is also going to make it worth your time. Yeah, because nobody wants to spend all that time writing a book or money producing it and not have it sell. Sure, sure. Well, I kind of have the feeling, Nina, that a business plan might not be the only thing you need to succeed. <laughs> Am I right about that? Uh, that is true. As you know, you I think um, I've heard you talk before about author attitudes. So there's some. What what else do we need to succeed as authors, either of fiction or nonfiction, um, besides a, a a nicely crafted book proposal and business plan. Well, you really do need an attitude. You need the right attitude, which I call this author attitude. And well, tell know, us, it, tell us about that. What is you know, <laughs> what is author <laughs> attitude anyway? <laughs> so it has four characteristics, and I'm just going to premise this by saying that um, the reason I talk about attitude is because because inevitably, I mean. 
the future of Inc. has an audience that, 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 that is hard working and a lot of them are business people, they're entrepreneurs sure. and so they're, they're familiar with working hard but they, and, and, and doing the business, a lot of the business stuff. In general, writers, uh, without sounding too uh, judgmental, um, in general writers tend to only want to write. They want to do the creative stuff. Sure. And when I start talking about business and business plans and all these, and, and even marketing, you know, this morning I was actually on, a, on another call with someone about marketing plans and, you know, writers just see all of this as, as just extra stuff. Yes. And, and today, you know, that they don't want to do. And today, in today's business world or publishing world, you have to do way more than just write. In or, especially in order to sell books and to, to write and write and publish books that will sell. So back to the attitude. In order to write and publish books that sell, which means get read, you have to be you have to have four characteristics that help you do everything it takes. So I created an acronym for them. And that is WOOT. It's like the Arsenio Hall, you know, WOOT, 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 uh -huh, WOOT, WOOT, sure. which hopefully you will be able to do when, you know, you'll be want to do this <laughs> when your book is selling. <laughs> so the first one, the, the W stands for willingness, which I kind of alluded to. You have to be willing to do everything it takes. And, you know, it starts with the willingness to sit down and write your book, you know, to get it done. It starts with... Um, you know, it's also the willingness to do this business planning that I'm talking about so that you're not just saying I have a good idea and not really evaluating whether that idea is a marketable idea, whether it will sell. Um, it's a willingness to have your work um, uh, reviewed by other people and the willingness to hear their criticism and to actually to implement the thing, you know, whatever it takes to make your book better. It's, it's all this willingness. And then there's optimism. Uh, you want to, you need to be uh, optimistic because uh, there are studies that show that people who are pessimistic tend to take everything very personally. So mm -hmm. if they uh, give their book to an editor and they get bad feedback or, you know, a lot of they're told there's a lot of things they have to change or if they get rejections from agents or their book doesn't sell well any of those things they take it very personally and they see they think that there's nothing they can do to change it they think that there's something inherently wrong with them or their work and there's nothing they can do to change it and so they get stuck and they don't think that there's any you know it's an obstacle for them optimistic people don't think that way optimistic people take the same uh, bad sales or criticism or rejection or whatever it is and they say this isn't something inherently wrong with me or my work it's something I can fix tell me what to do about it mm -hmm. and I'll change and I'll change my work and so they succeed because they find ways over these obstacles what they perceive as obstacles they don't even see them as obstacles they see them as opportunities to move closer to their goal so so optimism is very important, especially because you know there are just so many times when you're publishing when you know you feel like like it's hard and there are rejections, and so you have to be optimistic. Then the third, the second O is for objectivity, and we already talked about this a little bit. It's that objectivity to put yourself um, in somebody else's shoes, in the shoes of a publishing professional, like an agent or an acquisitions editor, so that you can see your work um, and yourself almost more importantly through the lens of someone else through this publishing professionals uh, viewpoint so that you can determine if your work is viable and if you make a good publishing partner or a savvy indie publisher so that you can help your work succeed and you can help yourself succeed and um, and then the T is for tenacity because it takes a lot you know you have to be determined and persistent to succeed as as an author and so all these things the willingness the optimism the objectivity and the tenacity go together to create this author attitude that will help you um, help you make your book succeed and help you create a, a career as a su successful author and help you to say woot woot at the end, right? That's right. So you've got willingness to succeed, which I I 
I hear that as whatever it takes, Nina. <laughs> you know, yeah. that W could stand for whatever it takes. And the optimism is interesting to me because there's a lot of studies, you know, in positive psychology that say that pessimists can become optimists, you know, or at least get rid of some of their pessimism. So things like yeah. gratitude. And, so that's not set in stone either. So that's not going to be an excuse for you. So don't, you know, can't get out of that one. And then objectivity, which Nina talked about, and tenacity. So those, that's a great acronym. That'd be a great thing to have just put on a little sticky note, wouldn't it? Nina, yeah. and just have you know the WOOT <laughs> acronym <laughs> up on your mirror that you can see uh, in the in the morning. Absolutely. Well, I think you know. Still, I can hear. I can kind of wheel hear the wheels turning in our audience. You know, you know, one of these business proposals and business plans, book things. This is a lot of work, you know. But I think what you're saying that this is not going to just help you create a successful book because Nina, you also alluded to when you publish a uh, self-publish a book, you are becoming a publishing company, did you not? And yes. so this is going to actually help you with a company. It's almost like a business plan for a company, isn't it? Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean as I said, if you take the business plan and you uh, and you flesh it out with all the parts you know, for your publishing company, your indie publishing company, that is definitely the kind of plan that you would need, you know, for any startup company, mm -hmm. and so that is going to give you your goals and your, um, uh, you know, your your foundational level la layer for your company. But beyond that, uh, it also is going to help you flesh out uh, how you can build a business around your book, because it's mm -hmm. not just about the books. The books tend to uh, unfortunately not be the biggest money makers for most authors and so um, it's going to ask you to think in an entrepreneurial way and, and I talked a little about that that uh, you know we think of it you start thinking about the spin-off books you know how many other books might I write um, and how are they related but you also start to think about um, you know in, in that section of your business plan you start to think about well what other um, what other products might I produce that, that are related? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn that off. It's your that agent calling you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm so sorry. I meant to turn that off before we started. That's one of those um, things. Uh, so, you know, what other products and services might I, might I uh, produce that are related to my book? So, you know, could it be that I'm going to... Uh, I'm so sorry. The life of an author. <laughs> I knew there would be public, one thing I would forget. Houses, New York City's calling you, Nina. <laughs> right, I knew there would be one thing I would forget before we did this webinar. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, so you know, you, you have your book, or you might have many books that you've considered, you know, I'm going to write all these different books, and then what might I, uh, what products or services might I produce in, in the, that would support those and, yes, and then there's yes. the branding of that you know uh -huh. how can that support me in branding myself and that's to me actually this is the most exciting part of the business plan because really? it is going to huh. make your yeah because it, it's going to make your publishing company successful and it's going to make you as an author successful and well well I want to I want to interrupt you because I want to ask you some more about the branding thing because I'm really really interested in that and I've got a couple of other questions for you but let's. I want to go back and ask you about your new course for a moment that you got coming up. You, this is starting what May the sixth? Yes, May sixth through June twenty fourth. Well, tell us about that. Okay, so it is a two month long program uh, that two, in two months really. Yes, two months, and it has eight weeks of live coaching with me. So mm -hmm. anyone who ever has considered doing, you know, a, a consult with me or signing up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, um, this is an opportunity to actually do eight weeks of coaching with me at a very affordable rate. And with that, you actually get um, my home study course, uh, Author Training 101. Uh, you get eight audio recordings, and you get 11 videos, and you get eight weekly assignments that are actually from my new book, The Author Training Manual. It actually has a training in it. Oh, cool. It has training cool. exercises. So uh -huh. the course is set up to correspond with the book. And with the when you sign up for this live coaching, you know, the Author Training 101 with live coaching, I am gifting everyone a copy of the book. Oh, fantastic. So, yes, yeah, so they don't have to buy it. So that's a $20 gift. 
Um, and they get a bonus recording with Carla King. Carla and I sat down one day and we did a session where we talked about spinoffs. So just where we left off our conversation, mm -hmm. where we talked about how do you create these spinoff books to help you brand yourself. Nice, nice. And then I did a Tenel seminar recently where I talked about the three different kinds of business plans you could have, which is what we've been talking about, a business plan for your book, a business plan for your indie publishing company, and, mm -hmm. and a business plan for your career. All of that is in there, plus you get a um, access to a private Facebook group, and that Facebook group is ongoing. They don't ever, you know, they never have to leave unless they want to, and that is there for for questions. And you know, I, I access it all the time to to help people with whatever they need. Fantastic. Um, so that's almost like a a, a private forum. For it is a private thing. forum. Mm -hmm. nice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they get all of this and we'll be meeting on Tuesdays from uh, 4 to 5 p.m. as you said from uh, starting May 6th through June 24th. So this, will be, so this will be a live group program then? They're it is. going through it together? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. So it'll be group and, and only 20 people. So it's, it's oh, uh, cool. only mm -hmm. 20 people and so that I can give everybody uh, the, the time they need. Now do they, have to ha do they have to have, I'm sorry, these questions keep coming to my mind. That's okay. My audience wants to know, um, do they have to have a book in process now or just an idea or where do they have to, or an experienced author? Who, who is this course appropriate for? Uh, any, all of the above. So it's great okay. if they have an idea and they want to put it through this filter because mm. that's what we'll be doing is we'll be actually going through and we'll be, uh, the process we've been talking about, this process of building a, a, a business plan for your book. That's mm -hmm. the process they will go through. Oh, if really? Oh, so they come out, are they going to come out with a business plan at the end? Yes. Of it? Oh, yes. fantastic. Okay. They will. All right. They will. Thank you for clarifying, Ellen. All right. Well, <laughs> that's the question on my mind. I mean, we've gone over this business plan thing, and I've got like these nine sections, and then I find out there's got to be more sections if I'm self published. And so, you know, if you're going to take this course and be able to walk away, with the business plan, with the help, with your help, and then I imagine just being in a group and having that accountability and and being in there with other folks who are going through the same thing is going to be immensely helpful. I would think. Yeah. So they they will they will end up and they will end up with a business plan for their book and they will they will have a writing guide. They also end up with a writing guide because when you go through all these sections of a mm -hmm. business plan, um, the overview that you produce that first section and the table of contents and the chapter by chapter synopsis work together as a writing guide. And in the course, I teach them a process to use that. Oh so wow. That they are Cool. actually ready to write this marketable book when they're done. Oh, fantastic. So they take, they're take taking elements of the actual business plan then and sitting down with that and writing their book from it. Right, and they will have done all these exercises like we've been talking about to actually think about how will I build a business around my book. So they, they have it all. It's all there and done and oh, they're excellent. ready to move forward. So they get that all of that for the um, the for two hundred and forty nine dollars, but I'm and also got, throwing you, it. Yeah, you've got a couple of different levels too. But yes. go ahead and tell, go tell us about the bonus and tell us about the levels. And then I want to get back to this branding question for a second. Okay, so there are levels. Um, so when they when they go to the site, they'll, they'll see, and I think you're going to put that up on the a link up for them somewhere. Yeah, but they can also go to thefutureofink.com. Uh, forward slash author one oh one. That's all lowercase. Thefutureofink.com forward slash author. A U T H O R and the numbers one zero one futurebait right. com forward slash one hundred one. So, so when they um, so when they get there, they'll oh I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Go right ahead. When they get there, they'll see that there are three levels they can choose. The level I'm talking about is the basic. Um, Author Training 101, How mm -hmm. to Craft Books That Sell with the eight weeks of live coaching. And if they sign up for that by April 28th, so, the, so there is a deadline for the offer that we're making today. Um, if they sign up by April 28th, they will get one month membership to my nonfiction writers university for a dollar. And I'll be sending okay. them a link to that. So if they register, then I will send them a link that they can use. And instead of paying $9.99, for one month, they'll get to test out the university, and with that, they will actually get my easy schmeezy book proposal template, <laughs> which they can then use to, 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 as a template for their book proposal. And oh, they also get uh, a how to get engage, how to build engaged platforms and communities e-course, and a how to blog a book audio course, and four months of archived teleseminars and homework assignments. 
and access to um, also to the May teleseminar and homework assignment because that's upcoming. So that's basically almost a half a year of free uh, material in the Nonfiction Writers University. Um, all of that for only a dollar, and that's worth you know another fifty dollars. So basically, it's a hundred and fifty dollar value altogether because mm. the university for for all anyway, all of that together is about hundred and fifty dollars. So. They get well, quite a bit extra if they sign well, up by the April 28th. Fantastic. Sounds like a, an awesome course. Uh, for those of you who are ready to take advantage of that, I w certainly would highly recommend uh, Nina's work. Just go to thefutureofink.com forward slash author 101 and take a look at that. But in the meantime, Nina, let's get back. I'm very intrigued with this idea of book as branding. Talk about that. Okay, so... I'm going to tell a brief story just so we can understand. You can understand. Okay. So, right. what most authors end up doing is they just write their books, and and I was at fault of this too. So, I, and I had a lot of ideas that were not all lined up in one genre, and so, um, you know, for our listeners who have businesses, maybe you know it's very simple. They're just writing books that um, seem to correspond with their business, mm -hmm. but they might write a book, you know, over here that they think is going to help their business in this way and then they might write a book over here that they think will help their business in that way or maybe they don't have a business maybe we have some listeners who, who don't have businesses and they just have book ideas and sure. so for me I wrote a bunch of books over here that I you know short ones that I self published that were about practical spirituality and personal development and then I had a literary agent who said let's do books about writing and publishing and blogging and so that's what I did and then all of a sudden I had to figure out how am I gonna bring all this together sure so then I suddenly had to figure out how do I brand myself because I have a split personality I have books over here <laughs> books over there right and they don't go together <clears throat> but they actually did now I I sat down and I did the exercise we talked about and I wrote down all the books I wanted to write with pitches for them all so I would understand what they really were about and I created a timeline of how they should be published and then I looked at how do they go together and and what kind of courses could I produce with them and how how do I want to put myself out in the world as an author and and if if I have a self publishing company, you know that would relate too. How how does my company, you know, how does the face of my of my indie publishing company relate to this? So mm -hmm. all of that goes together into a brand, and so that's where the inspiration to Creation Coach came from. I had to really think about what do I do in this area of my publishing, and what do I do in this area of my publishing, and how do they relate? And that author brand is going to help you create books that sell, to write and publish books that sell, because you're always going to want to be thinking about that. Well, how is my marketing going? To, you know, moving with that. How is how are mm -hmm. my books always having an element of this branding? And how is my Facebook page and my Twitter account? How is it all coming together to brand me as an author? Well, let, let's talk about the person who may be listening, who you know, is, doesn't consider themselves really a writer per se, and that they don't have you know twelve books or six books or even plan to write that many, but they know that they need and they really want to write a book for their business and this idea of branding themselves with a book you know really appeals to them let's just let's just take my case for instance Nina uh, in my in my uh, time away from the future of ink I run uh, pinkcoattails.com we've rebranded from marketing chi very recently to pink coattails so okay fine you know um, would a would writing a book be a good idea from for someone like me who's trying to rebrand their business and um, and get more visibility speak to that a little bit of course because uh, first of all a book is always the best business card you can hand out sure mm -hmm. and it's going to carry forward uh, what you know your expertise and what you're teaching and um, you know so you have something that you can put out there that will uh, that is an extension of your brand so your brand is pink coattails yes but if you have a book that um, you know relates to pink I don't know whether it's gonna be called pink coattails or it'll be something related to pink coattails mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the cover has something with pink coattails on it or you know whatever it is you then have something that's that extension 
that that is teaching the the um, the principles that you teach, and so there that's going to help you to go out and get uh, maybe radio, uh, some radio gigs, or you know some media in some way mm -hmm, that's related mm -hmm. because you now can say I'm an author, you know that. And, and so that sends them back to to your company, Pink Coattails. I like, so I, like this, I, I like this idea of the, the book being a brand extension and carrying your brand out into uh, into the world. And you've, you've alluded to about media. There are just some sorts of publicity that you're going to find much, much easier to get if you can hold that book up and wave it around, right? <laughs> yeah, there really are. Yeah. There, and, and there, there is. And... Um, and, and each you know each type of book is different in terms of the type of publicity you can get or media you can get but for sure being able to say you're an author makes a difference it makes yes. a big difference especially in your expert status and you know how people mm -hmm. perceive you and and in, and in speaking as well too I mean you have experience with that uh, yourself have you found that your books have promoted your speaking career as well Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And actually the mm -hmm. first books that I produced, which I mentioned that I did some self-published books, I produced those um, you know, before that was before Kindle existed and right. Create Space and um, I produced those as booklets and they were short versions, uh, short versions of the books I wanted to publish later, the longer books. And all I did was I took a couple chapters, um, I condensed them you know, put the introduction in there, and they were just short booklets. I still sell them, and um, and I I produce those as booklets, just uh, you know, saddle stitch stapled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I took those and said, I'm an author, and oh, that's wow. how I got speaking wow. gigs. And, and I still have them, you know. And so, right. <laughs> and, and that's how I got speaking gigs because I kept people, you know, I kept being told that the way you build an author platform is to go out and speak. That's how you have to go speak. And I thought, how can I get a speaking gig when I don't have a book. Why would they want to hear me speak? And so I did that so that I could say I'm the author of such and such a book. And I have stacks. I teach a course called How to Write a Short Book Fast and I have a box load of things that have come in the mail that say book inside. And when you open it up it's this book that's like this big. <laughs> you know, and it's just this stapled little uh -huh, book. Uh -huh. And these are people, you know, and they say book inside. So, well, but it's interesting, you know. You said this before, before Kindle. For people who want to make a, pla a speaking platform, you would really advise that they have a print book, though. I would think that's that's the kind of credibility you're talking about, not just an ebook. Yes, I think they should have both. Yeah, yeah. And, I think today and now to be with, found. you know, now with things like you know, Create Space and Lightning Source, and there's just no reason you don't have to have a saddle stitch pamphlet anymore. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go out there and and get a uh, an on demand book. So that your expenses are very, very low. Oh sure, you know, I, and I have some of mine. Um, some of my self-published works are on uh, Create Space um, and on Kindle, and then I've even produced them on uh, digital presses, where mm. I think the quality is higher and they're actually cheaper for me to print. And so, if these are books I want to take and sell at the back of the room when I speak, I right. can actually just put in an order. They ship them to me, and I would have to pay them to distribute to, mm -hmm. to Amazon. So instead of that, I just uploaded everything to Amazon. You know, to create create space and they're there for people who want the printed versions. So gone are the days of authors having uh, 5,000 books and boxes in their garage, right? <laughs> yeah, no need for that. <laughs> no need for that anymore. No really, need for that. Really. Well, well, let's get into this um, idea of some people are afraid to self-publish because they think they want a traditional published deal and other people say, well, it's better to self-publish first because that could be a stepping stone to a traditional publisher. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, um, I do not recommend self-publishing first if your dream or goal is traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. And in this now, way, now, I, now, Lena, let me stop you for a second. You mean? Do you mean self-publishing the book that you want to become that you want to have traditionally published, or any? You would you would you wouldn't recommend any self publishing if you want to go the yeah, traditional route. What um, are you saying? It, it could be both. It oh, really wow. depends, mm. but definitely not the book you want to have picked up by a traditional publisher. Okay. And here's why: um, if you want to tr if you want to try one that's not the one you want to go to the traditional publisher, you better do it and do it well. Oh. 
because they're watching, right? They're <laughs> well, they going will to be check watching. your number. They yeah, yeah. They're going to check your numbers. Uh -huh. And so this is, this is the thing. People keep, well, let me just, I'll just lay it out. Okay. A be honest with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a traditional publisher will not pick up a self-published author if they have not sold enough copies of their book. Well, now, what is enough copies? Give us a number. <laughs> from what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, if you haven't sold like 5,000 copies of your book in a couple months, or oh, for the really okay. big traditional publisher, you know, mm -hmm. the really big traditional publishers, you know, 10,000, 20,000 mm -hmm. in six months, they don't want to know about it. So but, unless, but unless, you, unless you've got a, an established online marketing platform with a, a big email list that's responsive and you know you can do it, you're best off not going that route. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh. So unless you know that you can sell somewhere between three and 5,000 books in a couple months, I always tell people, write a book proposal, which we've talked about. We, we've just talked about how to do yeah. that. Write a book proposal, build your author platform, because that's what they want. They want an author platform. They want a marketable idea and, a, and an, off, an aspiring author with a platform. Build that author platform, prove to them your idea is marketable in all the ways we've talked about, mm -hmm. send mm -hmm. in that book proposal, and then see what happens. If you can't find a publisher, then self-publish your book. Now, if you want to self-publish some other ones, you know, your your not your big book, and and get that selling, you know, fine. But again, if you can't sell those, they're going to look at that and they're going to say, well, she couldn't sell those. What would make us right, think she'll right. sell this one? No, well, that makes sense. This is a a real fallacy that people are are always saying. Oh well, just go self-publish, and some publisher will pick you up. No, mm -hmm. it's a it's a mistake. Wow! Wow! In well, my can, humble opinion. Well, can you all? We we respect that opinion. <laughs> you know. Can you talk this a little bit? Because I'm a little bit confused, and I suspect if I am, our audience might be too. Exactly, what do you mean by author platform, and how do you build it? Okay. So, in the simplest sense, author platform is a built-in readership for your book. Built-in readership. Now, how do yes. we get a built-in readership? I kind, I kind of have an inkling, but let's lay it out here. Okay, so it's anything and everything you do to be, to begin with, to be visible to your target audience, okay. the people who would buy your book. But there are several elements to this. So first is the visibility. So me being here uh, on this webinar or Google Hangout or whatever it is we're doing. Whatever it is we're doing. We right. figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on this Hangout. A Hangin'R. Um, Denise called it a Hangin'R. There we are. Hangin'R, yes. Oh, on this Hangin'R, um, I am now being, uh, I'm visible to you and I'm visible to all the people watching. Right. So that's visibility. I have become visible to a bunch of people who signed up for this Hangin'R. Uh, so you know, and every time I go to a conference and speak, I become visible to more people. So that's visibility. Everything we do to be visible to more people in our target audience, that's visibility. So that's part of platform building. Number two is reach. Reach is, is how far what we say and what we do travels. Hmm. So if I'm at a conference, let's say, at a writer's conference, and I am speaking, and there's someone at the conference on their computer or their iPad or whatever and they're tweeting what I say that's reach because basically I'm talking to the people in the room but what I'm saying is going beyond the room yes. to Twitter but not just to my Twitter it's not even going to my Twitter following it's going to her Twitter following and then if her people retweet what she says to the people they know I've just my reach has gone beyond the room to her following and to somebody else's following well, how, but how would you determine something? I mean, you don't have any control over that. How would you, um, especially if you're trying to put reach into a proposal, how would you quantify something like that? Um, you, you, you can, there are some analytics you can use to mm -hmm. see how many retweets you get, that sort of thing. Okay, all right. So, so look, at, look at your own platform, see how many, what percentage of your tweets get retweeted yes. and picked up by others. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
So um, visibility, reach, what else goes into this? Uh, then authority. So authority starts with your credentials. Mm -hmm. um, it's also your experience. But the more visibility you have and the more reach you have, the more authority you are perceived to have. Sure, sure. Perceived okay. authority is really very important in the online marketing world. It and is. associating yourself with other experts in your field can give you implied authority, can it not? Yes, it can, indeed. Yeah. And that's why we also put on our blogs and our websites um, social proof and all okay. these things. So all of this goes to authority. As and then seen the last on the Today Show, you know, that that's, kind of, yeah. that's seen on the future of ink. <laughs> yeah, there so. we are. There, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so then the last element is influence. And when you add up visibility, reach, and authority, you start to get influence. You are seen as influential, as you know, and, and what you say is listened to. And so that's when, um, if you hold up your book, and this is when I'm supposed to have my book right here, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to hold up your book and say, you know, my book was just released, please go buy it. You, you, the fact that you're influential, people do what you say. People do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, or if I say go sign up for my course, people go and do it. And so this is, uh, so it's all of that together. So to me, platform equates with influence. But it's all, uh, all these things that you do and have going on that in the end give you the kind of influence that will help you sell books. Perfect, perfect. Well, that's all, that's the kind of influence we all want to have, you know. I don't think we want to, <laughs> you know, have influence in the way that we think of as. I don't think most of us who are on this webinar want to want to think about the the, the not to stereotype well to stereotype used car salesman type <laughs> of influence the, the sales. You know, we want to be influential in the way that our future customers have come to know, like, and trust us, you know? And then what better way to do that than delivering value in a well-thought-out and well-planned book that is an extension of your brand? I think it's brilliant. Well, and what that does, Ellen, really, is it allows you to have impact. Mm, and that's mm -hmm. what we all really yes, want. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. I think the people who are listening to us today and who follow the future of Inc. Um, have businesses um, and want to write books that are impactful, that have meaning to the people who read them or the me people who come you know, to them for services or mm -hmm. whatever. They, they, they want to uh, have, have meaningful, um, they want what the books that they produce to uh, change lives and yeah. uh, to, to impact lives in a meaningful and positive way. And if you don't produce a book that, that is marketable, it won't get read. Right, and if right. it doesn't get read, it will not have that meaningful and positive impact. No, for sure, and you'll have no influence. <laughs> That's right, and you don't have any influence. <laughs> and uh, Nina, I've heard um, you talk about a hybrid publishing path, kind of this mix between self publishing and traditional publishing how does that work well uh, if you um, well I mean how it works is that you self can self publish some of your own books and then you could you know maybe land yourself a traditional publishing deal if you do so as we talked about if you do okay. really well right. somebody so will so find that's you. What you that's what you meant what we have talked about before right. kind of doing but this the, but there are other ways, and so, for instance, while I have self-published some books and I have two traditionally published books, I just signed with a literary agent who provides hybrid publishing, and oh, they really? will now oh. produce my eBooks for me. Oh, nice, nice. Yes, well, I don't have to do it. So if interesting. Huh. Yes, yeah, so you, there are there are other paths to hybrid publishing beyond you know, beyond uh, doing it all yourself. But but hybrid publishing is just that. It is making the choice to have traditionally published books and self-published books, you know, because you feel that that will in some way benefit you. Interesting. Well, you know, uh, your newest book now is the Author Training Manual, right? Yes. And, and your course, the Author Training 101, How to Craft Books at Sale, they both mention um, the concept of training authors for success. So how do authors train themselves to become successful published authors not just not just published authors but successful published authors I know <laughs> part of it's this woot factor but is there something else some other differentiation between an author and a successful published author what can you how, what, how can you help us with that well 
I mean, a, a, anyone these days can become an author, right? Sure. I mean, they can just write a manuscript, you know, produce a manuscript and shove it up there on Kindle or CreateSpace and say yeah. they're an author. So that's not necessarily being a successful author. So everything we've talked about today is about how to produce a marketable book. And as you said, the attitude part, the author attitude is about, you know, doing what it takes to go beyond and, you know, do mm -hmm. the marketing and to do the business planning and all of that. Um, the training comes in, um, in my book, The Author Training Manual, and in Author Training 101, um, How to Craft uh, Books That Sell, the, the training comes in, in in using the tool, using the business plan, and then actually training yourself to not only have the attitude, but to to see yourself through this this you know to behave and to like a publishing professional and to see yourself and your work through that lens, wow. to, so that you're not just an author anymore. You train yourself to 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 be in the role of an acquisitions editor because Interesting. Hmm. that's the person who would you know determine if a if a book is marketable and if a person has everything it takes to be successful as an author and so hmm. you want to train yourself to approach your work that way and your career that way and so the training is you know the, the training exercises in the author training manual give you many many ways to to do that but I mean you could do it on your own but you know it's things like um, uh, like um, spending time online in forums listening to people who are in your target market what are they asking about what are they um, you know what are their concerns and then going back and thinking about that and how can I apply that to my book or you know and, and spending the time on Google to, to think about you know where are these people you know, so that I can market to them, and um, doing a bookstore tour where you actually go in, you know, look on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com and that sort of thing, and then you actually go to bookstores and you're actually examining books so that you can really get clear on how to make your book different. And you know, it's it's all of this is it's a real training. Wow! Wow! Well, that, wow, Nina, I, can, I just can't believe it. We're almost up at the top of the hour. <laughs> but I, I want to ask you one last question. What is a daily habit that you have that contributes to your success, to this Woot Factor? Something you do daily or nearly every day that you think makes a difference in your success? Uh, I... I don't ever let myself off the hook with things that I know have to get done. It, it goes back to a decision I made. I made a decision that I refused to fail. Wow. Wow. And and that was when everything changed for me. That was actually when I got the traditional publishing deal, the first one. Uh -huh. But um, in respect to that, I I have a to-do list. I use I use um a program called Free Mind, which is a, mind, a free mind mapping mind map. program, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I use that to create a to-do list and to map out all my different projects. And so I, I have all these mind maps and all these, you know, all these things I have to do. And there's certain ones that I know I just have to get done, you know, by a certain point or that day. And so, in terms of daily, you know, there's certain things that you know, and it could be. It could be 11 o'clock at night, and I'm looking at that list, and mm -hmm, I'm saying, mm -hmm. no, I did not do that, and it just had to get done today, and I do not let myself off the hook. So you're uncompromising on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, it could mm -hmm. be Saturday, and there are things I would rather be doing, and if yeah. I did not get that done this week, it gets done. Well, that's that, that goes back to that W in the root factor, the willingness to do it and whatever it takes, right? <laughs> and it's the tenacity, the yeah, just, yeah. you know, determination and persistence, and just... Yeah, so I, I would say that's it. I, I, I don't give up until it's done. <laughs> well, Nina, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this, and you've just given us a ton of great information. You could just recap uh, your course for us. That you can find that at thefutureofink.com forward slash author 101. That's futureofink.com forward slash author 101, and that's all lowercase. And that is Nina's course that is coming up starting on May the 6th. And I think you can tell from just being with Nina over the past hour 
that she has a lot more information and experience to impart to you. So if you want to get your book written and come out on the other side of this with a fully crafted business plan for your book in the company of other folks and get this done, then I encourage you to, to jump in here. So Nina, do you have any uh, last thoughts about that um, encouragement uh, to give to people? I would just say that, you know, I mean, this is a real opportunity, as you said, to just get the business plan done, to craft a marketable book, uh, to uh, to get the support you need in doing that. You know, eight weeks of getting on a, on a phone call with me for an hour and getting all your questions answered and, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, plus all the bonuses, all the information, the courses that are in the Nonfiction Writers University and right. uh, some, some really great assignments in there as well to help you develop a, a, a successful career as an author. So, um, you know, it's, it's not about, um, it's not just about becoming an author, it's about becoming a successful author yeah. so that, as you said, you can have impact and so it's, it's about becoming um, producing a marketable book, one that will sell, and I think that uh, the Author Training 101 course will will help anyone you know who's listening to us do that. It will produce for them the the business plan they need, and it's going to help them map out their career and uh, give them the tools they need to run a successful indie publishing company. And uh, it's going to increase the likelihood that they produce a book that will sell. I love it. And you said that if they sign up by, was it April the 28th? Yep. They yep. get, for just a dollar a month, in your um, author's training university. Am I correct? Uh, yes, the and Nonfiction I, and, Writers University. Yeah, and that has that template in there <laughs> to help you produce that book um, business plan, right? Yes, it does. But it also mm -hmm. has uh, the other courses as well. So they're going to get uh, the easy, they're going to get the How to blo uh, Build Engaged Platforms oh, right, and Communities right. eCourse. That's actually um, the uh, almost more valuable because that's going to help them build that author platform that they need. Excellent. Excellent. And it's a, it's a full course with a, with a workbook. And they'll also get the How to Blog a Book audio course. And uh, yeah, and they'll get so they'll have that membership for a month for just a dollar, so Fantastic. they can check that so out. they can they can really take a, a good test drive there to see whether that's for them or not. With or they risk, can no risk at all. That's, <laughs> they can, but they need well, to sign up by by April twenty eighth at midnight in order to take advantage so, of the offer. So just go to thefutureofink.com forward slash author one hundred and one, and hop into Nina's course. And those that do, she'll email you the link. And you can get that experience with her 30-day trial of her author university for just one dollar. And Nina, I cannot tell you how much we've enjoyed this. And uh, I'm just going to turn it back over to Denise very briefly to close us out. Thanks, Ellen. Well, I uh, there are a few questions, so oh, if fantastic! You're willing to um, take a few minutes? Sure. To answer them. Okay. <clears throat> sure. Oh, okay. good. I love I've, been, this. I've been monitoring them, and uh, you know, so I want to make sure that the ones that you know really uh, pertain to everyone. Um, let's see. So I think we answered the one from Yolanda about um, is this in your author training 101? <laughs> the book. <laughs> so she she was referring to the book. So yes, the course is based on the book, and you get a copy of the book with the course. So it, that's yes. Um, um, okay, so D asks, I've written a closet design guide, so I don't see big selling, but I think I should target educational markets and industry associations, kitchen, bath, interior design schools, etc. Does that make sense? Uh, that does make sense, but I'm not sure that there isn't a market for design guides. I mean, uh, she should go take a look at uh, Grace Bonney. Um, I, I'm trying to think what her... She has a. She was a blog to book deal, uh, design sponge at home. I think it's called. But Grace Bonney, big hit her blog. So I'm not convinced there's no market. I is think what there's I would a huge say. market for it actually. Yeah, that, that's my thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, here's another one from Yolanda. She asks, Would you write a business plan for short stories and no novellas, which you intend to sell to magazines? I don't know that I would do a business plan for a book per se, but I would do a business plan. I think that if you're wanting to write short stories and sell them different places, that having a business plan for your career as a short story writer is just as important. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's still, you're wanting to be an author of short stories and maybe one day you want to put all those short stories into a book. So 
you still should have some sort of business plan for yourself. So yes. I would agree. And plus, you want those short stories to be marketable, that you're going to have an easier time selling them if you're writing marketable short stories. So why not put each one of those short stories through the same sieve, you know, and, and develop each one of them in a way that's targeting a market? Excellent. Now, this is actually a really good question because I think there's a misconception behind this uh, that a lot of people have. So it's not just about um, <coughs> Suzanne here who asked this. She says, this sounds like a lot of work when you can just go to Amazon and sell your book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm not laughing to be mean. Um, yeah, you can just go to Amazon and sell your book. But the question is, is it going to sell? And, exactly. And, and what I've proposed here is a lot of work. And I can tell you that my coaching clients come to me thinking they'll just, you know, write their book. And I say, no, before you can write your book, we're going to go through this process. And we're going to, you know, fill out all the sections of your business plan. And we're going to determine whether this is going, you know, whether this is a, a, worth your time and effort. And that's the point, is yes, you could slap together a book, you could even have it edited and get a professional design of the cover, but the, once you get it up on Amazon, it's competing against thousands and thousands of books. I mean, they're, they're telling me, you know, something like 300,000 um, e-books a year are going up, but I think it's more than that, you know, and, and, and the traditional publishers supposedly are putting out something like 1,500 books a day. There are more wow. new product releases in the publishing world than in any other industry. How the heck is your book going to get discovered if you don't really target your market? The only way that you can increase the odds, I'm not saying there's any assurance of anything here, but the only way you can increase your odds of your book being discovered is to try your hardest to produce a marketable book and yes it is hard work period it is hard work yeah and I think that the the issue here is that it doesn't matter if it's on Amazon doesn't mean it will sell no, no. matter I mean, of fact uploading it's probably... it to Amazon does not mean it will sell no it may, and it may have that. less chance to sell on Amazon than somewhere else because right. there are less and less books in bookstores. So actually, if you could traditionally publish and get your book in a bookstore as well as on Amazon, you probably have a higher likelihood of selling books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. That's interesting, yeah. Okay, so Betty wants to know, what do I need to see in my business plan for me to know it is viable to go ahead? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of factors. One is that your book, um, you know, we talked about the market, that your market is... Um, uh, not just big, but but targeted. You know that it's a it's a it's a um, a market that is. It has to have decent numbers, but it has to be engaged as well. So it has to be a market that's spending money on products in in this subject area. It has to um, want uh, want and need some answers or solutions or a new story or something. You know, it needs they have to want this book or need this book. And then in the category itself, by which I mean, you know, if you went to a bookstore and you were looking for a book in a on a specific shelf, right? The, the actual category, whether it's body, mind, spirit, or um, um, business, or sp public speaking, you know, whatever it is, when you go and you look at that category, it needs to be a book that is, uh, uh, I mean, what you need to see in your business plan is, when you do a competitive study, is you need to see that your book is needed, and that it's unique. So it can't be just like the other ones, and it has to, uh, it has to fill a gap in that category. So those are just a couple of things that, that you're really looking at in your business plan. Okay, good. And we have some kudos here for you. Joe says, I have followed Nina's How to Blog a Book Advice and it was amazingly helpful. Well, thank you, Joe. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, do you, during Marnie wants to know, during the course, do you help us write book titles? There is information um, in one of the chapters, a, a big, huge section on book titles, and um, in the Facebook group and in the live coaching, we will work on book titles if people ask questions about that. So that's an opportunity to work on book titles, and I have been known in the Facebook group to take people's pitches and their titles and to revamp them. Excellent. You know, to, you know, to work on them, to edit them. and. 
And does the course focus on fiction or nonfiction? Both. Both. Okay. All right. So I think that covers. Um, oh, Heather's got a good question. How much time would one need to devote to the plan over the eight weeks? It's a good idea. Just not sure it's the right timing for me right now. So aside from the hour a week, how much time do you think is required? Well, there's a fair amount of re I mean, you've got the book. You know, I mean, you're reading chapters in the book and you're doing completing exercises. How many of the, exer the training exercises you complete is up to you. You can complete just a few of them and still accumulate the information. The more you do, the more you'll um, the more you'll get out of the course, but uh, I would think you're going to need a minimum. And, and then there are videos and the audio. So the audio you could li is an hour long for each one. So there's two hours right there. And then uh, you know, so so I would say probably about three hours if you're going to really work it. But the yeah. audio you and could listen to while you're running or exercising or in your car or you know, it's not you don't necessarily have to. Right. And you know, the, the thing is, this is about a business. This is about your business as an author and an entrepreneur. Right. Um, so Jane Ann wants to know, really? Really? Can this course help my fiction ebook on Amazon increase in visibility and sales? <laughs> <laughs> I think that depends on how much you put into it, Jane Ann. I think so too. Yeah, I think that if you Yeah, if you apply the principles, I I it you, as I say, it increases the chances. I can never guarantee that anyone's book will sell better. You know, your it depends on your idea, it depends on your platform, it depends on how how you apply the principles, all of those things. And we never know. There are some books that are horribly written that are ideas that have, you know, that nobody thinks will make it and they become bestsellers. And then there are the books that are phenomenally well written, great ideas that tank. So we don't ever know. All I can say is that if you apply this technique, which has been used in the publishing industry for centuries, to to analyze the probability of a book succeeding, you will increase the chances of your book succeeding. Okay, well I think that uh, that's about it. I think you've answered most of the other questions that, that are in there and so I'd like to invite you all to go check out um, the Author Training 101. It's at thefutureofink.com forward slash author 101. It's also on the sidebar there for you. You can just click over immediately to see the incredible value that Nina is offering and I would have to say from my point of view that this is the deal of the century. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> sorry, Nina, but <laughs> it's like I would say that this should be at least double the price. So okay, uh, okay, the price is going up now. <laughs> <laughs> so go get it before she raises the price. That's right. <laughs> Ser serious. I'm serious. I've been in this business a long time, as has Ellen and Nina, and um, so yeah, this is a great deal. So Nina, I'd love like to really. Um, you know, thank you for your time today. You just did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, it was just really exciting to see what you've developed for people because I think this is a part of the publishing and writing side of the of the equation that most people don't talk about. I mean, I don't hear about the business of writing very often. So, um, thank you very much for that, Ellen. Oh, you're you're very yeah. welcome. And thank you, Nina. I just really uh, enjoyed uh, interviewing you, and uh, you were just a delightful guest, and you're just a wealth of information. And, and thank you again for all of your contributions to the future of ink. You're a, a stellar contributor, and we just love you to death. <laughs> well, well, thank you. I appreciate you hosting me today and uh, having me on the future of ink. And I love you both. And uh, again, thank you. It's been an honor. Okay. We'll see you all around, and the video will be available as a replay shortly. So thank you again from the Future of Inc., from me and from Ellen Britt and from Nina. Thank you for being with us today. Bye-bye.